Alright, I think... Man, did you see the big fight of the uh, passenger on that Southwest Airlines flight and the flight attendant? Or did you hear about it? It's talking to you, Sammy. Oh, I, I heard about it. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> He's sound asleep over there. I hadn't heard about it either. That's right. No, I heard about yeah, that. I know Mariah probably heard about it, but uh, they, uh, I guess they were flying to California or something uh, and it landing. On the, I mean, had been landing or on the landing. And the lady just got unruly and crazy and went off on the flight attendant, punched her in the face, knocked her out, oh. knocked two of her teeth out. Oh, oh my lord. They, they'd already called the police and had the police there to, to meet them when they got there. But, uh, uh, and then, of course, the lady won't act like nothing ever happened after she punched the lady out. <laughs> I know, it's just it's crazy. People don't realize, though, when you're on an airplane, Anything you commit is a federal crime. You're on a federal mode of transportation, even though it's not owned by the government. Oh, no. You, you just give me a drink on the plane, and I'm happy. I'll be happy as shit. I'm, I, I'm ready, buddy. I'm ready. <laughs> give, me, give me some of the music in my ears and drink in my hand, and I'm ready. <laughs> and I think we're about live, aren't we? Oh, uh, we're actually kicking live now. There we go. I just thought I'm going to uh, join it. Yeah. Yeah, but well, my phone, I'm trying to get Roger to get me on my laptop because sent me this, the link on my messenger. I don't know if you if you remember that or not. He is BB. Um, let me see here. I can see what I can do. What do I uh, mean? <laughs> you, you, uh, <laughs> let me minimize that. I'm looking for some various things here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said going to link on the, my, my uh, phone, and I... Uh, well, you're going to have to wait a second. I'm trying to get everything else going. <laughs> that's all right. I'm, 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 I'm working to help here. Um, let's see. Dwayne, you said Facebook Messenger? Yeah. You know that little lightning bolt? Yep, I'm trying to find you on it. William Dwayne and Hodge. Yes, they. And let me see if this thing will work. Um, looks like it's US02. Web? I'm guessing. Web. Zoom. I, I was trying, every time I'm on the phone, I try to tap it so I can see if I can send it to myself. But obviously, I'm not that computer. I just sent it to you. I just sent it to you. Let me see if it's one that will work because it comes up as a hyperlink. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. Wait, wait, that doesn't tell you. Wait, wait. Well, that's something. I know. I know. When I click on it, it pops up ready to start the meeting. Thing. Let me do this. You got it now, Dwayne. I already sent it to you. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. Give me a fresh link here. Put you on the top of the top of my list here. See all the fun we go to for all this stuff, Mariah? Yeah. <laughs> I know. We are, you know. To make, to make uh, this happen, cool. you actually have to have three different programs running. You have uh, to have Zoom, OBS, and Facebook Live. Uh, technology. But, Roger, we're so glad we got you to do it though for us. I hate when Facebook changes this crap around on me. I know. It messes up everything on you. Yeah. So, Dwayne, we're going to have you twice on here? No, I'm, no, hopefully I'm not. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get his audio connected. Right here. Okay. Well, we got you, look like. Let me, let me do this. You got your iPhone and your computer. Hang on. It's all good. <laughs> Blue-eyed guy tonight, isn't he? Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, some, you some, some it, it. Hear me out. Anyway, anybody out there that's watching, welcome to Let's Talk oh, Racing. Finally. 
No, we've been going for about three and a half minutes. Uh, uh, I restart my phone. It makes it easy enough. It doesn't blow the phone up. Yeah, it blows everything up. Uh, Sorry again. I had to do that with my Twitter app. Now, I found out yesterday, this is Uh-oh. a little bit of sad news. Eric McClure Ooh. had passed away at the earlier part of this month on May the 2nd. Right. Oh. Yeah, the sad part is I've known him a long time, and I I need to read Facebook more often apparently because everybody said, "Oh yeah, it was all over Facebook." I said, "I'm lucky to get on Facebook to do this doggone show." There was been several racing news uh, announcements as well too, but, uh, yeah. and they a couple of people paid tribute to him as well at one of the races. But you are a busy man. You are a busy man. Yeah, I've, I've known Eric for quite a long time. In fact. Uh, one of his friends used to be one of my crew chiefs when I was racing. Uh, that uh, that's how I met Eric. It was like at Richmond. He was not old, was he? At forty-two years old. Wow. Yeah, so, young, young guy. Yeah, I took and was talking to his fiance uh, and trying to find out if she'd heard anything on what caused it because they, yeah, you know, they nothing nothing was announced on that. Yeah, it's still a mystery. The autopsy report apparently has not been out publicized. Oh, I, yeah, I guess I, I didn't know they'd done an autopsy, but it's one of them things. Yeah, I mean, because it's a when you get mysterious type of things that happen, they do the autopsy yep. stuff. Yep. I mean, when my wife passed away in bed, they still did an autopsy on her. Well, they want to be sure. They got to know the right call. Well, the the really scary part was when the police officer I was listening to him talk on the radio. Looks like there's no signs of foul play here. I'm going, really? <laughs> really really good thing uh, to, to hear when, when you're yeah. in the middle of all that stuff. Yeah, no, it's not. <sighs> Cater procedure and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it doesn't I know. Uh, yeah. I understand it that. Doesn't sound very good, though. Yeah. Mariah. Oh. <laughs> Let's get off of that. <laughs> there you go. We have a smiley face back there in the background. We're going to put her to the foreground, at least so everybody can see her. There you go. There she is. <laughs> see, whatever I do here is what everybody gets to see that's watching on the Internet. So That's good. And you, Everybody can it's set up their own screens how they like to see there it. There we are. On their computer. See, we've got Mariah full screen. That's good. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? We're all just a bunch of old guys having fun. We're still doing good. <laughs> and we're just happy about being, being old guys still having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell us about your most recent uh, race there. Yeah, so I raced on Saturday at I-25 Speedway in Pueblo, Colorado. I raced my brand new late model for the first time this year. It was my second time in the and I went out and raced the short track, and I actually had a great night of racing. Um, I ended up winning all the races that night. I won my trophy dash and my main event. I We were dodging rainstorms all night, so we didn't get to do a qualifying, so we did a pill drop. Uh, it was, oh, it was wow. crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was raining off and off all night. We got one hot lap session in, but I got maybe 10 laps in the car, and we weren't really... But there was a whole bunch of cars out. They were mixing the cars to try and drive the track, and they yeah. they counted that as a hot lap session down there. So I was like, well, at least I was able to get it to the track a little bit. Um, it was pretty loose, um, considering that it was raining and pouring, and it was actually sprinkling and a little bit um, heavy rain coming down during the main event. Um, so I was really proud of the outcome. I, I was able to run the top line, and I actually made a pass for the win, and it was Super exciting! I was I was really excited. I was so thankful the crew was there to help help set the car up. And crazy enough, we were running on tires from three years ago um, huh. from my oh. street stock because we were making a last minute decision on Friday night to go down to the track, and we didn't have enough time to get new tires uh, for this track because I don't race at I twenty five Speedway. I race at Colorado National, so yeah. we just decided to take the whole street stock tires and just go have some fun <laughs> down there, get some more time to run with the big boys at Colorado National, and ended up winning. Awesome. Okay, is that dirt track yeah. or asphalt track? It's an asphalt track. It's the quarter mile asphalt. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that was super the car looks good. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to get a good look at it. I'll have to 
Yeah, it's on her uh, Facebook page too. That's where I always go. Uh, anytime I hear something about Mariah, I find it on her webpage. And I know, um, what was it uh, Sharon Boswell with NBR? Put a little story out about it too, I think. Yeah, good pictures. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely try and keep up on my Facebook page and get to know my Instagram a little bit. Uh, not too big into social media, but I'm trying to keep up on that for my Facebook page for my racing and then my Instagram as well. I got to make sure I catch some really cool pictures at the racetrack and keep yeah, post well. them. Yeah, <laughs> social social media is just a, a lifeline nowadays. It is, it is. That's where I've definitely got a lot of contacts from and yes, met a lot of friends. A lot of different racers. It was super cool to be able to meet them over over Facebook and then talk about racing and end up racing against them sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you can uh, like coming on our show. You, I mean, you get uh, Roger has all kinds of people on there. He's, he's a huge uh, public relations guy. I don't know where he finds or how he gets all these people that we do, but uh, we managed the uh, well, last couple of race, uh, races. Evening, we've had double contacts that people had never met before. Met on the on the show and uh, turned out to make some pretty good points with each other. Oh, that, that's super awesome. Yeah, I definitely uh, ended up getting some contacts from a couple of shows previous that I've been on as well. Yeah. In fact, one of them was our guest. Uh, is going to be a guest tonight, Jeremy Clements. He races in the Xfinity Series, a 51 car. And then we had a local, our local track champion, um, uh, Brendan Butterbean Queen, the 03 late model he drives. And they met there, and next thing we know, they took over the show. They had such a good conversation going on about <laughs> about about eye racing. We couldn't even—I mean, the show what was it an hour and a half at night? Uh, hour, hour and forty minutes. Forty minutes of sounds. Uh, but it, again, it's one of those kind, con- and nobody knew, but they ended up with people that knew each other uh, within the world as well too. So it is a good one. Yeah, they they didn't, they didn't have a clue, you know. So, well, that you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I remember seeing you run this race, and you know, and there they go. And <laughs> then they can talk about their rigs they had for our racing. So, you know, yeah, yeah that sounds like some of the sprint car guys there, the old timers. The old timers. They, they'd there. go and be racing against each other, and never really met and talked. No. And then we had them on one night, and that show went for what two, almost two and a half hours. Two hours, yeah. One, one guy said, "Why well, about bedtimes?" Eight o'clock. So eight fifteen. I say, hey Charlie, isn't it time for you to go to bed? I say, hell no, I'm having too much fun. Yep, I'm having fun. But they were they were a hoot. Yeah, those old guys like talking about the old glory days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mariah, you already get to have an old glory day already, so that, that puts you a step ahead yeah. of most of them. Good. <laughs> and she's got a trophy to prove for it. There you go. A couple of them in the background there. <laughs> So you got future plans coming up for another style of race here pretty soon, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm actually working on making my first ever ARCA debut at the July 31st race at Colorado National Speedway, which is super exciting because it is my home track. I'm I was really going to say, that's it. great for you. Yeah, I'm super excited. We're, we're still working out the details, but hopefully I can get some sponsors and hopefully it'll make my, make my debut and make all the Colorado fans super excited to actually have a home home track driver racing there again. Yep, home track. And that's where, that should be your pitch for sponsorship. Uh, ARCA is uh, covered on TV, covered on radio. Uh, a lot of uh, publicity will be there. A great place NBC for somebody. NBC Gold. It's on NBC Gold. Right. I got yeah, NBC Gold. gold track pass. Um, so if they just sponsor that when you're going out there, look, so you're getting real live time and recorded coverage out there for people. So, uh, you know, people that can't get to your race that night can, and I should be able to watch it live on right online with the NBC Gold Track Pass. Have you have you ever been in one of those heavy heavy car high horsepower cars before, or is this going to be your first time? I actually went to Daytona in oh. January and did the uh, Daytona, uh, the ARCA testing days in Daytona, yeah. and I was able to get a little bit of practice in the car. I didn't fit too well, so I wasn't able to completely do the whole day but i was able to get certified i was able to run around the track a couple times at daytona and it was it was super exciting and i've been talking to the team owner and um he said if i can get some really good seat time in the arc or in the late model i have um i should have a good enough feel for the arc car and then we'll get enough practice when he comes here too as well and, and being your home track that's going to make it much much easier for you too Yes, it is. I'm I'm super excited. I love racing Colorado National Speedway, and it was actually freshly paved two years ago, so it's definitely a lot oh, faster good. now. Oh, 
Oh, it'll be fast uh, too then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be able to use all that horsepower with, with a paved track. Yeah, it. I've, all the classes gained about a second or two from the previous uh, times two years ago, so it's great. Yeah, well, it's been. Everybody thought they were the hero after they came to track, right? So, boy, that well, crew chief really got that thing spoke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's just such a great track. There's still a little bumps in it, but it's definitely a lot smoother than it was before, so I definitely oh. love it a lot. Yeah. It's fun to watch some of the races uh, at some of the tracks that they go through. They put the in-car cameras in there, and that's all you can see is a vibration from some of the tracks that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sammy, do you know what, uh, what kind of horsepower do the Arkham cars run? Oh, man, I've got, I would guess up around 650, I would think. I mean, they're, they're, uh, up, they're up there. <laughs> they got four barrel yeah. on them, aluminum heads. I mean, they're, they're, they're up there. Yeah. So kind of like the whole Hooters Cup cars used to be, you know. That's, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. And Mariah, is that a, you said that's a quarter mile track? It's a three eighth mile track. At three eighth, okay. Yeah. Give me a lot of on and off the gas out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a super fun track. I definitely had a lot of practice on that track, but I could definitely get a lot more. Um, I definitely was super excited for this one. Are you going to get any chest time with, with the with Dr. Cole out there? I hope to get a couple practice sessions um, in the ARCA car where we still don't know the full plan yet because the team I run for is an ARCA East team and they've never brought a car to the ARCA West series yet. Uh, so we're we're actually working on getting some more information about the, the Colorado National Speedway race for the ARCA series and hopefully in the next week or so I'll have more information that I can relate to you guys and hopefully give you guys a little schedule. Cool. There's not yeah. many COVID restrictions out there now, is it? Is COVID, COVID restrictions gone for, for y'all out there? It's actually starting to go away. We're actually, if you are vaccinated and or not, you can go to the stores without your mask, which is super, I definitely like that. But uh, And then the racetracks out here, they don't really have too many COVID restrictions. Uh, so it's really exciting. Yeah, without the mask, it's nice. Without the mask, they got the, we can do that here now. So it's nice to see some smiles again. You know, you, you, you missed all that for the last year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mariah, you said when you had the uh, Arca test back in and Daytona, you had a little problem sitting in the car. I imagine because the pedals were too far away from you. Am I guessing or what? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm not a very tall driver. I am only five foot one. Um, wow. So I was the smallest driver um, for the team that I was testing with, and all the other drivers were definitely a lot taller than me. I would <laughs> estimate five five, if not a little bit bigger. Um, and the seat I run here in Colorado is a fourteen inch uh, full containment seat, and the seat in Daytona was sixteen, if not a little bit bigger inches. So I was kind of moving around and all over the place. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, I was towing the car a little bit when I was going on the back straight away and going into the corners but it was the best experience i could have ever had i it was a dream come true uh ever since i was a little girl i dreamed of racing at daytona or even just driving at daytona and i still dream about that day and i still talk about it like it was yesterday it was <laughs> <laughs> well deserved you worked hard to get there oh yes and i definitely plan on going back next year we're we're saving up to get there for next year as well so you think you're gonna have a car, car up there for next year in February? Yes, we're going we're gonna to work with the team uh, to hopefully get uh, set up, and I'm going to go out there in about a couple of weeks, actually, since the ARCA race for Colorado is July 31st. Um, I have to go out there to get fitted in the car so I can actually reach the pedals this time, and I can <laughs> see over the seat a little bit better. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> because, uh, for my late model, it took a day or two to get the seat and everything all adjusted so I could reach the pedals, and I could see a little bit better, and I could reach everything. So we're going to go out there and spend at least two days to get fitted in the car, and then hopefully the same for the Daytona test day next year. Now, you uh, wasn't that Charles that you went with down to Daytona to test with? Yes, I tested uh, with Charles, the car, and I went down with MDR Motorsports with Sharon Boswell and tested with yeah. um, Andy Hillenberg. I thought that was what I remembered from way back when. <laughs> <laughs> Just yes, few, yes. Just a few months ago. 
Is this Colorado race? Is that going to be your only ARCA race this year, or do you think there's going to be another one? I'm, I'm trying to get some more sponsors for the ARCA season, but as of now, we're we're only planning for the Colorado race, just because we really want to we really want to make it to the home track here in Colorado. And if we have to give it our all and put some money into that, then at least we can make the one here in Colorado. But we do want to try and make some more this year. Yeah, that'd be a good that'd be a good deal if you put it together. Yeah. All, all it takes is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> as, as we always say, you want to find out how to make a little bit of money, start with a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, they want to make a million dollars in race to start with two. <laughs> <laughs> you know a Heidi Johnson, Mariah? Uh, yes, that's my mom. <laughs> oh, she's she's stalking you in the background here. <laughs> oh, my <I'm> mom. <laughs> that's good. Now she's probably yeah, in the other room, not, right? <laughs> she's actually at work currently. She's uh, she's a little sad that she couldn't be here, but at least she was able to watch the race on Saturday, even if it was oh. over video chat. <laughs> that's good. Uh, hoping to get our, our other person coming in. I don't know if you know if you saw the links or anything for the event, so who was going to be here tonight? I did, yes. Oh, so yeah, you know Jeremy's going to be joining in as well. Yeah, he just had a good run in the first segment. <laughs> yeah, the oh, first segment of the race, he was fifth. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he was a real good run up until the last segment. Yeah, there, there was a little issue on that there. one. Oh, my God. He, he was. He was peeved about that one. Yeah, yeah damn good one going. He get, wound up going all the way back to 30th. And then he got oh, wow. back up to 23rd with the last couple of laps that were left. Yeah. Needed more time and less rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. They didn't have rain then. They didn't have rain for the No, they didn't have rain. Race. But he was racing back toward the front again. That How about old Timmy Hill, man, went a tenth in the truck race on the last lap and got spun? <laughs> Yeah. What's the old thing going to run in the <laughs> Oh, I need to get Timmy back on again. I haven't had him on for a while. Yeah, he was one of the good tent though, man, in that truck race. And he was, he was right there with the, with all of them. He was right there with them, man. He was yeah. doing good, and they got spun, spun on the last lap. Yeah, I, 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 yesterday I was sitting back here in the in the studio here, pulling up some of the old YouTube videos we have, and uh, I ran across the couple with. Eric McClure in there, so this was back in 2015 we were talking with him. Um, and he was talking about all the new stuff him and Hal Martin were doing. He got sick there for a while there, didn't he? Yeah, well, that's what we were just talking about yeah. at the beginning. He passed yeah. away at the beginning of the month. Yeah, but I mean, he was sick He was sick a year or two ago. He was yeah, sick his uh, muscles started eating up each other or something like that, and they finally got that all worked out. Um, but he had, uh, I think, some kidney issues as well, so... I was saying, man, 42 ain't no time to go. Yeah. You, you're already past that, Sam, so you're good. I'm long, I'm long, I'm long past that. <laughs> I was, was going to be nice. Yeah, I'm long past that. <laughs> so. But uh, anywho, so we got your ARCA looking forward to that. And uh, so now is in who's the – did you ever say who the team was or you're not allowed to say? Um, it's but, Andy Hillenberg with Fast Track oh, it's, Racing. It's still Andy? Okay. Yes, sir, yeah. I'll have, I'll, I'll have to text you and see if uh, the number I have for him is still good. Maybe we'll pull him on here one night. I haven't talked to yeah, him. He, he that. Huh? I know he would definitely enjoy that. He's yeah. such a great guy. We love, he, love having uh, And he's a talker, <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be some competition for us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, he, he's been a racer a long time, dude. Yeah. He's been around a long time. He, he made a go of trying to uh, get the track down there. Oh, shoot. Um, Rockingham. Rockingham. Back up yeah. and running. Went yeah. down there. Uh, interviewed him down there and talked with him there. And uh, a couple other people. We had uh, There was a media center set up. I did interview a bunch of people there. And some of them were... Uh, some of the people that you know really young and coming up oh. uh i still remember who was it stephen light was there um oh shoot the johanna long 
she was there. I mean, they were still young trying to do this stuff out there when the track was just opening up. Did you see that thing where the North Carolina governor proposed? Uh, I forget what they had. They always have fancy names for the bill. They're trying to go through this. Is, of course, the state legislature about yeah, $30 million infrastructure around the racetracks, not just Charlotte, but Rockingham and North Wilkesboro. Yeah. And, of course, Charlotte, I mean, Rockingham is is close to be usable right as it is, I guess. But well, they did, like I said, Hillenburg ran it for a while. They had a, at least one truck race there and some other races. I think Cars Tour is talking about that. I know we talked to one of the folks about that, and they postponed that because their cars were flying in that place. And yeah. it was a bigger track than they've been at before. I said, like Mariah, she's got a three eighth mile track, put her on one mile track in her car, and it'd be like a rocket ship. And she's going, well, this thing has never gone this fast before. And it burned the tires off of it, but uh, including the Wilkes Barrel, which has been closed for, been disused for a long time. But a long time. Uh, and that track, North Wilkes Barrel, just updated the year before they closed it. They just updated everything inside, and NASCAR dropped them. They put in a lift yeah. to put well, the car up on top of the concession yeah. stand. They put all kinds of stuff in there. I remember upgraded, that. Upgraded I remember everything. That. Parking lot, and then they shut it down the next year. All that yeah. money. Well, it, they had two men owned it and when one passed away then the other passed away and the two families didn't couldn't get together on who wants to buy it who and they sold one family sold half their half interest to the guy that owned New Hampshire at the time and he took their one of the dates to his New Hampshire track and they sold over the group Smith group who took that schedule and put it down in Texas but that didn't open and have a race yet and I think that subsequently uh, Bruton Smith's group has bought New Hampshire, so they own 100 percent of the track now. And his son's running the show now, uh, and uh, said something on. He was on a podcast with Dale Jr. and says he mentioned something about the possibility that he might do something. So, and Dale Jr. had brought people out there to clean the track up so they could do a, a, a show, one of his shows. Well, they did. He made a yeah. show there, but he cleaned the track so they could do. Uh, scan it for eye racing, so you can actually do you know eye race North Wilkesboro. Yep. So they had to clean it up, but they've been it been you know nothing been done to it for so long. The track is still thin. They had to clean the track up, and they got a bunch of volunteers out. It's been a couple of years ago now. So that'll be fun. I mean NASCAR now with the ownership, with the all the you know, previous agreements have gone by the Bay Board on the different tracks. Um, that's the reason I think, in fact, I think Texas leased Coda to run those races. Wow. My understanding. No, they don't bring short so, tracks back anyway. I mean, you know, short, short tracks is a lot better racing. <laughs> yeah, well, they're throwing all this new stuff into the road courses and short tracks, and they threw dirt on Bristol and, and all this and all that. So they're changing stuff around, a lot of it. I think in response to fans that got tired of you know, it made sense to build a mile and a half track because you put a not a huge amount of property and put enough people in to support the race, but they all kind of raced the same, and you know that was not the fans didn't care for that. There's no cookie cutter tracks, man. All mile and a half, and they got they got a ass load of them. Now they, you know, they're not as interested as they were. Short oh, tracks yeah. is a lot more action, a lot more, a lot, lot more to see. Do you, uh, well, do you guys hear about Eddie DeHunt? Yeah, he got uh, definitely suspended from Hendrix yeah. and NASCAR. Yeah, he he uh, he'd been spotted for two races and then he got suspended. So I don't know why they didn't. Uh, I think they just recently suspended him. Yeah. Yes, well, Hendrix he, Hendrix Motorsports but the, him. but the incident apparently happened two you know last year. Oh, was it last year? Yeah. Anyway, he didn't come to light so recently, so... Yeah, well, he's not good thing because he was just recently arrested for it. That was a kicker. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, not good. I, I mean, you can't have anything in your closet nowadays. Oh. If it's there, you can be in trouble. I don't have trouble. Is all right if I, keep if I keep closing my closet? You, you never know. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Yeah. My closet so long ago, there's probably nobody around still. Yeah. Well, I know I know two things that aren't going in a closet, and they're right behind Mariah. Those two trophies, yeah, yeah. 
Now, do y'all run every week out there on the line? Or is it a weekly track or you bi weekly? How do, you, how, how do y'all run out there? So, I race at Colorado National Speedway about bi weekly. Um, there are a few weekends that I run back to back, but I run about two times a month at Colorado National Speedway. And then on my off weekends, I do plan on going to I-25 Speedway and running my leg model, or I have a Grand American Modified I could bring out as well, and I also still have my old Super Stock I could bring to race there as well. Would well, that be a play goal there? <laughs> Go be yeah, a whole stable there. If you got to do them all, that'd be a fun hunt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> double duty is definitely hard work. I did it a couple of years ago when I ran a mini stock. I did double duty with another car, and those were only four cylinder cars for the mini stock. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine, he did uh, some charity event one night, and he raced every race in every, every division. Race. And you know who that was? Yeah. I remember that. I wrote a story about it online years ago. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. <laughs> and, and you know, there, there, there are people out there that think that racing is not a sport, but they've never been behind the wheel and had to see what you go through. Um, I mean, uh, you know, it's bad enough. Bad enough. You're racing when it's 75, 80 degrees. But people think that it's air conditioning in the car that you've got all this modern day technology in there. Then they start putting those temperature gauges in there and find out what was the one race they had that uh, the TV had them on there 150, 160 degrees inside. Yep. yep. I would say, yeah. You want a toaster oven? Just hop in a race car and the hot sun on a racetrack. Yeah, yeah. Those aren't those aren't the um, spurs that they're putting on the heels of their pants, uh, the heels of their shoes. Yeah. But the old guys always say is that roll the windows up, turn the heater on in the middle of summer, and drive around for a couple of hours and see what you think about that. Yeah, Jeremy can tell us all about that. Jeremy, right? Jeremy's had experience with that just recently. How hot it gets inside of a race car. Hello, Jeremy. Right, hey, <laughs> sorry, I didn't know if y'all could see me or hear me or anything. Yeah, right. we were actually talking to you. <laughs> How you doing? You, hey, you remind me of my driver when I spot for him. He tells me he never listens to me when I talk to him. <laughs> only That's time he listens. The only time he listens is when he's up high on the outside line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. My wife doesn't listen to me either, so I know which, I know how that feeling is. <laughs> hey, we were we were just talking about how hot it gets inside the car, because uh, a lot of people think that NASCAR drivers uh, it's not a sport, right? Not. It is. It's good way oh, man. I'm here to tell you. Uh, that race Saturday, it was it was physically demanding, and it was very hot in the car too. Um, and I wasn't the only driver that felt it. There was there were numerous ones. That, I think there were seven or eight that needed that went to the care center and just you know got IV or whatever. But um, it was. Wow. I mean, you're you at that track. You're you're working that wheel. You're shifting a ton every lap. It's twenty turns, and I was going the first year a bunch of corners. So. It was definitely physically demanding. I was, and I was the next day. I was, uh, I was sore. <laughs> and it's just, you know why? Because you know, on the ovals, you're working the same muscles every time. On the road courses, you know, you're 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 doing all this, and there's a lot more going on. So you're just working different things that just aren't used to it. So there was a lot more to it, and I was definitely definitely felt it, and I felt it the next day too. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, I've taken friends of mine that have done other sports and take them and go roller skating. And they say, oh, that should be easy. You know, they got all this leg strength and everything they do. And then the next day they're going, holy crap, what the hell did you do to me? Yeah, <laughs> my, exactly. My legs are exactly. killing me. I said, well, you use muscles uh, you ain't used before. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do work out and run and stuff. But, uh, man, they just it still wears you out. And um, I talked to Ryan Ellis after the race, and he was asking me, "Man, did you were you were you tired after that race? Like I was, I'm wore out." I was like, "Yeah, it was." He's, like, "I don't race every week, so I just want to ask somebody that does." I was like, "Yeah, it was. It was challenging for sure." He's like, "After I took the checkered flag, I just wanted to turn around and come back to pit road and just get out of this car." <laughs> <laughs> <It's so hot. laughs> now I tell you, somebody Andy Lally probably he didn't have much problem with it. Who, who is that? I'm sorry. Andy Lally. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love Andy. He's a good guy, too. Yeah, he, he's he, a he probably had no driver. problems with those arms. He's used to that stuff. Oh. 
Yeah, and he's a good driver too. Really good, nice guy. And he, I don't know if you watch the truck race, but I, I was watching it for our race. So he did a really good job on the broadcast there too. Yeah, you were hanging out behind him a lot on Saturday. I, know. I was about to run through his bumper on that uh, first day. <laughs> uh, I finished fifth, he finished fourth, and I was I was a little faster than him, but it was one of those deals I wasn't trying to push the issue. So I kind of bumped him a little bit a couple times, and I was right there, but I was just like, I'm not, I'm not trying to wreck his boat, so I need to be a little cautious here. See if he'll let you get by if he just moves over to give you a little spot or not. Yeah, yeah, we were racing for stage points there, so uh, he yep. didn't want to give anything, and that's fine. <laughs> that's the bad part of it, you know. Boy, how humid was it out there after all that rain? Who, who was it? So how humid. humid was it? How humid was it out there after the rain? Oh, humid, yeah. Hell, that's what, that's what it was. It's so humid, man. It was bad, yeah. It rained, and then... Right before our race started, it stopped, and it was drying up, drying up quick. And man, yeah, it was it was humid. Like I said, it was a it was the hottest race we've had uh, so far this year. And wow. usually, this, this is the time it ramps up in May. You know, uh, into May it starts. You're getting in these summer months where it's going to be hot as hell every freaking weekend. You better be ready for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, in July it's going to be all cooked then. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. You know, we raced Charlotte this Saturday at 1 o'clock. Uh, it's been in the 90s every day here yeah. in South and North Carolina, but I think it's it's going to start to cool down. Yeah, Sunday, right. uh, Saturday, it's going to be, you know, a high of 82 or 3, but um, I think Sunday it'll be even cooler, but we don't race Sunday. The cup, <laughs> cup guys do that. I think it's supposed to be a high of 70 Saturday. I mean, Sunday, oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's good racing weather anyway. Uh, excuse my bad manners, Jeremy. We have Mariah over here. Mariah, this is Jeremy. Hello. She's hey. one. I was, she was one I was telling you about that uh, went out, and raced her first late model races, and came back with two trophies. Oh, good deal. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, she races out in Colorado. I was about to ask that actually. And go ahead and tell them a little bit about yourself, Mariah. Uh, yeah, so I race in Colorado. I race a late model this year. Last year, I raced a super stock, and I'm currently trying to make my ARCA debut. I'm hoping to make the July 31st race uh, at Colorado National Speedway, which is my home track for ARCA. Wow, well, that's awesome. That is really cool. I hope you do, and I hope you do good. Thank you. Thank you so much. You don't really have an advantage. It's going to be a home track for us, so that's going to be even better. Hey, that'll be really good. That'll help a lot because you'll know the track already. Plus, yeah, uh, getting a hold of sponsors should be a little easier, too. There you go. Well, and Jeremy's Colorado, too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. I don't so know Jeremy. the problem brought well at all. I actually ran Pike Peak one time in 2003, and that's about the only time I've even been in that state. <laughs> <laughs> Pike Peak International is a good track. I grew up around that track. My dad... Uh, Worked in the pits with the Bush Series. It was super cool. Oh, yeah. I I would love to go to, how, like, I don't know where, what part of De uh, Colorado this is. Is it anywhere near Denver? Because I'd love to go to Denver. Uh, Colorado National Speedway is actually just a little bit north of Denver, but Pikes Peak uh, International Speedway is in Fountain, Colorado, which is about 20 minutes south of me, where I'm in Colorado Springs. Oh, okay. Good deal. Yeah. So that's, what, about an hour and a half? About an hour south of Denver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. been out to Denver and Colorado Springs myself, and yep. been to the Coors, Coors Beer Factory. You got to go there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's in Golden now. <laughs> yeah, Golden, Colorado. Yeah, I like to go out there and check it all out. I know there's a lot of good skin, good good outside, outdoor activity there. Oh yeah, there's. We have some of the best ski resorts in the country here in Utah. Yeah, no, I bet so. Yeah, I have to. That's on my bucket list for sure. <laughs> well, now you know somebody out there that you can get up with and find out some of that stuff. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. I'll definitely have to ask Mariah about it. And when when is this Arca race that you, that you might try to race? Is that did you say already? Now? Uh, yes, it's July thirty first. Uh, yeah. Oh, good deal. Okay. So you're trying to get sponsors to do it? 
Yes, I'm trying to get some sponsors to do it. I already have the team. Um, I am with uh, Fast Track Racing, so Annie Hillenberg. I am working on getting some sponsors. I have a few small sponsors, but nothing too big for the yeah. CNS race right now. Well, that's all. Well, hey, if anybody's watching that wants to sponsor Mariah here, I think you should do it and get her first ARCA star. That'd be pretty special. Yeah, if, she does, if she does like she did in late model, be a first-time winner at ARCA, too. Hey. That makes dream come true. <laughs> hey, that's, yeah. a, that's a good advertising point, too. Say, hey, look, I jumped in the late model. Bang, two, two trophies right off the first time. Jump in ARCA. Hey, maybe we can do that. Get your name out there and all the viewing and all the dollars that you can generate from off of that. Oh, and that's what I mentioned to her with it. We had a local track. She's going to get TV coverage, potentially, uh, radio coverage. It'd be video from uh, uh, NASCAR Gold Track Pass. It's a good place for a local company to put on the side of her car while it's here. Because I'm sure she'll get plenty of TV time. Yeah, I would think so. And it being her home track, I just don't see how a company wouldn't want to do that, you know? But yeah. it would be a home run for them. Yeah, that was a that was a I don't know if it's your race on Saturday or the last race for you. I heard someone on the television actually talking about Jeremy, how good of a marketing marketing person he was for making uh, being able to get sponsorship, all the different sponsors. Uh, you got a lot of TV talk uh, during that race at that time too. So Jeremy is a king about getting sponsorship because he's got different sponsors <laughs> on his car every week. Um, they they, they, uh, they got to do a great job at marketing, that's for certain. Well, I, I tell you, it's it's a tough, it's tough. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a marketing person. I've just gotten somewhat better at it over the years. And if I want to keep racing, I got to keep finding the dollars to do it. So you know, that's really driven me to make it keep happening. And uh, it's it's probably the hardest part of this sport for me, especially. But yeah, all the sponsors, most of the sponsors you see on my car, are something that that I've gotten. So. Uh, just keep plugging away, and hey, uh, Mariah, just send send messages on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter to to your local companies or you know uh, different ones. But the worst they can tell you is no, so don't be scared to to ask them and try, and you never know what will happen. So, and that just answers the other conversation we had, Mariah, about your social media. Um, Jeremy got so I think Jeremy, you you lock into probably every piece of social media there is out there, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know them all, but I, I mean, the, I'm saying the major ones, you know, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Twitter. Twitter. I, I'm actually not on TikTok because my, my, my wife is, but uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, those are the, in my opinion, those are the three major ones. Hey, I tell you what, TikTok would be good for when y'all are putting together the car, getting ready for a race. You know, I have know. all that time motion stuff kicking through. I'm going to, here in a few minutes, I'm in the shop, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to walk the uh, over there. Mark's setting up our Charlotte car. We'll, we'll get we'll get Mark on there to say a few words and tell him if he can tell us what the hell he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the hell of a job. Yeah, there, you, know, you know what you tell the driver? You were in fifth. <laughs> I'll take care of the car. You just drive it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and, and, you, and you both do a great job of that. So do you okay. do your own uh, public relations, your me uh, multimedia, social media? Do you do it all yourself? Uh, most of it. I do have some help from my – actually, my aunt uh, helps me, and, and there's a friend of mine that, that helps me. Uh, so so I do have some help on, on some of that stuff, like putting out press releases, things of, of that nature, and updating our Facebook. But uh, the other stuff's most mostly me, but I try to – you know, I'm at the shop a lot. I, you know, sometimes I just forget to do things with all that. It's it's tough to keep up with all that stuff, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, I have a question for you. I know you were doing really, really good in the race. And then all oh. of a sudden, uh -oh. you were back in the back. I said, what in the world is he doing back in 30th? Yeah. That, that was, uh, unfortunately, we had to come in to pit right before we took the green after that final – the second stage where we just finished six. Uh, they said they didn't get it full of fuel. The second can didn't engage and didn't work right or something. I, I don't really know. And uh, Mark said, we got to come back in. And I just thought, oh, man. And I just thought, well, 
surely a caution to come out. We'll be okay. Call, you know, I mean, it's not run green the rest of this race, right? Uh, well, it did. So that was, uh, we, I did catch, you know, up to 23rd and get up to there, but there was no caution. We were screwed, man. It was, yeah. it sucked because we just got the car driving what I, better to me, what I needed to go faster. We were going faster. We just need track position. So, uh, I'm not saying we're going to win the race. We weren't going to beat Kyle, but we definitely had a top 10 car. Uh, we just didn't get to show it. Yeah. Well, you got to show it for a lot of the race because, you, like we said earlier, you got a lot of good air time. And, yeah. uh, shoot, I was even texting you during the middle of the race and sending you, hey, you got all this good, nice air time here, you know. And and, and yeah. you were, and when you came in for your pit stops at the end of the stage, guess what? You were one of the cars they were showing. That's yeah. really that's really cool. I hope, yeah. I hope you can see the Let's Talk Racing decal on the seat post. Yes, we could see <laughs> it. I could anyway. I knew where it was. I know where <laughs> right. It was up the seat post and the bumper, too, that, like it's been. So uh, yeah. that's that's really cool, and that's what we need is uh, TV time for our partners. Yep. Yeah. Then, now, didn't you get somebody new for Charlotte now? I thought I heard something yeah. about that. Yeah, we got some new partners uh, coming up. Charlotte's one of the start of them. I met I met these people actually in the Daytona infield this year um, through through another friend. They were all parked together in the motor home lot. We were having some adult beverages, and they were cooking, and we were eating their food and uh, just kind of hit it off, and they're re really nice people. And they came to the Talladega race. And uh, anyway, we worked this deal out at Daytona and said uh, they'd like to – to sponsor us for the first time and uh i was like well, let's make it happen so uh it's pretty cool there's two different companies firewallsigns.com and absolute wall filling systems so they they split the cost of it so it wasn't uh you know for a small team like us uh they're not having to give as much as like if they tried to be on a joe gibbs racing car it's a it's probably a fraction of the cost so uh, <laughs> For them, I think it's a good deal, and then they split it, makes it even better. So the car looks – well, the car's not lettered at the moment. The guy is working on it, but the car looks great in uh, in the drawings and all that kind of stuff, the yeah. rendering. It did. I saw that. Uh, uh, Facebook, I think. I went up your webpage anyway and looked up some of the stuff. That, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have to go yeah, on you, social media and get some of the pictures you, you took because I, I, I haven't had a chance to get any yet. <laughs> Mariah, he, he, he and his helper, that's probably what you need for social media, someone to help you along. Uh, as soon as a car is painted or something different than to it, it's on social media. I think just before this, this back the car now, but the one you ran this weekend, um, they were pictured out day ahead of time, five or six of a complete surrounding every side of the car, and then a full side, a full front center of the car as well, too. Uh, and that, you know, your fans love that. And then you've got something... Is it this coming race that you've got that fans can ride along with you on the car? Uh, well, there's two of those, actually. There's one for, for next weekend at Mid-Ohio with okay. first specific funding on the car. You can get, I think you can pay $50 and get your name on the hood. And, and he does, like, giveaways and raffles and stuff of that nature. And then there's one for the Road America race July 4th weekend uh, with Whitetail Smokeless. They're on the car, yeah. and it's a yeah. patriotic looking car and it's kind of the same thing you pay 50 bucks i think and on that one you actually get a free t-shirt a t-shirt i saw that yeah and the t-shirt looks pretty good i actually it, said it hey is. man i'm gonna need we're gonna need some of those shirts too yeah <laughs> so yeah they look, they look really good let me tell you yeah. it's hard to get his shirts let me tell you i, yeah. I put an order right. in i got one from one for me and one for jerry when we went to martinsville Hers came in. I was sitting there, what happened to mine? I went back and looked, and, he, and it was already out after I, even after I ordered it. It went, you know. I mean, we ordered a bunch of those, too. It's crazy. I mean, that's really cool, though. It, it really is. I'm sorry. Yeah. We got to no, get no, you that, your dad gum. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that, that deal with Whitetail worked out pretty good, though, because some people had already received their shirts. So they were actually responding back to your Facebook post on it about the pictures of the t shirt that was out there. A lot of good comments over that. But that's yeah. really what, what I meant when Mariah when I said he's got people got a ride along with him. They get their name on the car and that's the ride along. Uh, and then in return, they get the pre uh, t shirt mailed to them. That's really quite a clue. Again, it, 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 sometimes it's all about the gimmicks and you got to find little sponsors that can help you do that kind of stuff. Roger does t shirts. Yeah. Uh, he's done that for local track stuff around here. There's bound to be somebody around in your area who can start doing t shirts. Uh, 
painting, anything you do to get, get your sponsorship out there. So you just got to get outside that box. That's what Jeremy's been doing for a while. Jeremy's been at a little bit longer, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some experience. <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> you've knocked on, you've knocked on a lot of doors, I'm sure. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. So yeah, the the name deal kind of makes it makes it less that the the sponsor has to pay too. So that 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 helps them to to do it and to do more. Maybe you know that's the case with Steve and First Pacific Funding. Uh, they they want to do that deal and it and it raised the money and therefore. They don't have to pay as much as it takes, yeah. so uh, it, it works. It helps everybody. A, a question about that, though: When you made the deal with them to have your, for them to sponsor your car, did they know what race it was going to be done in? Is that something pre-coordinated? Yeah, correct. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah. All these all the races this year are basically sold uh, at the moment. You know, I mean, there's associates still available and stuff like that, but mate, the primaries are pretty much gone. I mean, there is. They're like with Steve and them with First Pacific Funding, they were they signed up for the, the remaining nine races I had. Saw that. Yeah, that that might be what you're talking about. But uh, yeah, I said, hey, there was one of those deal those question. Hey, Steve, you guys, I got nine races left. Do you what do you want out of those? And uh, he's like, well, let me let me let me give you this deal, and if you get something. Uh, a lot bigger you just take that so it's one of them kind of deals so well what i, what I was getting to is i don't think anybody uh, we kind of had confidence anyway we know but you've done great all year long so anybody that's been a sponsor on your car has definitely gotten the coverage i mean we've been watching it on tv every week that you race uh so they a kind of a bargain deal i guess is what i'm saying that they get in because you've done so well this year it was a, 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 a good shot for them to be able to take sponsorship with you well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, at the moment, we're sitting eighth in driver's points, ninth in owner's points after like uh, 11 or 12 races, I think. Races, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's pretty dang cool, man. And uh, my goal is I want to win a, I want to win a race again, yeah. and then I want to make the playoffs. So that that's my goal. And there there are certain races I think we can do it at, but um, the Xfinity the Xfinity field has been really co competitive, man. I'm telling you. Sure. There's there's a lot of good teams. There's no slouches, and um, I mean this weekend there'll be seven more cars that don't make the race Saturday. So oh wow, yeah, seven cars missed it this past weekend. So yeah. that's a tough field. Now, are you locked yeah, in, or do you? Realize there was that many cars. Or are you locked in because points? of points? Yeah, basically, like the way it is, it's like the top thirty-one that qualify in right. are in, and then the rest is the thirty-six position field. Then you got like uh, five provisionals. So say like, say like, uh, if if you're the first man that needed provisional, that just depends on where you're at points. That's that's how that works, kind of. So, um, so in other words, it, you, even if you had a crappy qualifying, you would have a provisional since you're eighth in yeah. points. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how you guys had to do it because I know the cup has their little. Thing where yeah you got to get your own little charger yeah yeah got the charter system there and that's a whole nother yeah uh, ball game hey, still hope, according to what I just read I don't think I'm a full field for the 600 even though they've got like that uh, was 30 some odd charters that we should guarantee to start and there's only like four or five slots left and they're not gonna have a full field and it used to be hmm. so much different years ago you know. Kind yeah, like you guys got down. If so. yeah, for that cup deal, if you don't have a charter, you're not making the money. So yeah, those those open teams are called. If they don't, they just don't get paid that much. So that's that's pro that's why you see that, and it sucks because like you know, hell, a team like mine, if we wanted to go cup racing, I don't, I just don't say how we could do it because you got to buy a charter to make any money, and you got to yeah. spend million dollars to get a charter. Wow. Yeah, back in the old <laughs> days, you go out and race and. And they didn't have the charters. You made some pretty good money. That's why everybody was doing starting and parking. Exactly. No. Exactly. That's that's why they kind of did the charters because the big teams, you know, like Hendrick and Penske, they're all worried. Like they can show up the Daytona 500, they can miss the race, and they don't want that worry. So that's when the charter system came about. See, Mariah, that's the kind of stuff you're getting into. 
<laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. tough world out there. But you, Mariah's actually been racing since she was a young girl. Yeah, I started when I was 11 years old racing quarter midges, and then I worked my way up into where I am now. Sweet. That's what it takes. Hey, yeah, yeah. Been in the pits when she was a kid with her dad, so she grew up inside racing. And we've got a lot of that around here locally too. But that's that's what we have. And a nice girl like you to start out uh, watching, and then you're in the seat all of a sudden. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's what it, it does. And you get that seat time in late model, whatever else you can drive. That's a kicker. Get out there and be seen. Yeah. yeah any, anytime you get in the car too. I mean, I'm I learn every time I get in the car. Still, I mean, you learn something. So always just remember that. You know, just try to remember if you messed up. Like put that in your head, and that's what I try to do every time I go out in the race car. You should always be willing. You should always be willing to learn something new every time you go out there. Nice. She's got to be learning something with the two trophies she's got behind her. That was a good, that was a good night. And it's a good looking car too. Yeah. She doesn't have a number fifty one on it though, Jeremy, but she's got a seventeen on there. What number? 15? 17. No, no, she's okay. 17. I like that number. No, 17's a good number. Yeah. Uh, a real Hugo. good number. Real good number. <laughs> Look her up on Facebook, Facebook and you'll see a picture of the car, a latest car, the trophy win. It's a good deal. I will check right. that. When's your next yes, race? Okay. Race is this coming Saturday at Colorado National Speedway in the oh, Lake good. Heck yeah. Well, go kick some butt, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you want to go yeah. snag Mark while we got some time? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you're good. We know how it is. You get having too much fun. And don't even worry about anybody else. That's right. Well, well, I wonder if I can. Nice. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here that's we a go. Nice looking, a nice looking shop. <laughs> so, here, so Mark's setting up the car. Oh. No, I told you what lettered yet. <laughs> yeah. Um. He went got his hat. You go through a bunch of vinyl, don't you? Oh, they chilling. Mark, this is Roger, the boys. Hey, Roger, how's it going, guys? Good, hey, Mark. Good, Mark. They want to know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, really, that's that's Jeremy's question, not ours. <laughs> he said he ain't got time to talk. He's got to work on the car. <laughs> he he don't want to be here this late. I know that. But uh, last week we were me and him were here. Uh, one night till uh, 1 a.m. setting up the road oh. course car. And, uh, yeah, we're just in the middle of this 11 race straight schedule. So uh, we're a little behind because we, we don't we don't have, you know, but four full-time people. And it's, it's a lot of work to get these cars race ready at, at how we want them race ready, too. You know, it's not just wow. throwing them together. We'd be a little bit better off if we were running the same car that we had in Atlanta or Darlington, but this is a brand new car for us, so we're looking at having this car on the racetrack. So how did, how, did, how did you feel the uh, engine worked out pretty good at the road course, Mark? Well, I mean, that's more of a Jeremy question. It, it looked good for the little... For the little bit that I got to see it come up the front straightaway, but <laughs> that was the big. I got to see him coming off of twenty, and got to see him get halfway through turn one at the oh, top good. of the field, and that was it. Other than trying to see it on TV, so yeah. Hear me question, but it looked good there at the end of the stage when that second car was uh, on him with new tires, and Jeremy was able to hold him off and uh, yeah. and beat the line. So yeah. to me, it looked it looked like it worked out well for us. That sounds good. I like I like the race against uh, Kyle Busch when he he and him were one behind the other. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We uh we know Jeremy can do it. We just got to get the car right, and we had made some good adjustments on it there at the end. And he was running solid, you know, top twelve, top thirteen lap times. But unfortunately, with the pit stop issue, we were just too far behind. But you know, Jeremy, I think restarted. Well, he was twenty ninth. And over 30 seconds behind, and was able to to catch up and and get us back up to 23rd. So yeah. wow, yeah. You know, that, that, was really other, that was the other thing I was going to mention. He was way back there in 30th by a good 24 seconds, I think it was. So that's a lot of catching yeah. up to do in just a few laps. Oh, absolutely. And you know, he was he was beating 
like I said, at that time, we were running top 12, top 13 lap times. So oh, wow. that, that group of cars in front of us, he was beating them by two, three, some of them four seconds a lap. The ones that he was beating by four, obviously he caught those and passed them. The ones that he was beating by three, he caught. And then uh, by, the, by the end of the race there, he had used up his stuff, used up the brakes, and we just run out of time. We had, we had us easily a top 15 car in probably the toughest and stoutest field that we've had all season. Yeah. yeah. With the number of drivers, the number of road race specialists coming in. Yeah. And there's no slouches in that top 20. And now that was probably top 22, top 24 cars at Coda that was just absolutely stacked. So we, uh, we feel good about the speed we had, but it just wasn't our day. Fortunately, we got stage points that, yeah. uh, Saved our day. I think we, I think we earned the 12th most points total throughout the day. So we still opened up that points on a few of the guys that we're trying to stay ahead of. Well, that's good. Yeah. Just do me one favor, Mark. If you go to the the road courses, do not put super speedway brakes on the car. <laughs> oh no, hell no. <laughs> I had a friend of mine. Hey, I don't. I don't like listening to Jeremy complain as much as I have to. I can't imagine how bad that could be. <laughs> Let me let me see. Look, let me. All right, here's a speedway car. So you can see you can inch and a quarter rotor, inch and a quarter rotor, small brakes, small brakes. Uh, let me find. Let me find the road. I mean, we just had the road. The road course car is going to get a little TLC before next week, but uh, the brakes should be. Roughly someone. We got engines. Look, we got engines sitting here ready. Uh, what the the brake calipers were over here somewhere the other day, but at the moment I don't see them. Well, my plan might be we might have to look for them. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's not good. You might send them off to get rebuilt. Yeah, we yeah. might have sent them off to get rebuilt too. I don't know. There's. <laughs> Of course, they're not right here while when I want to show them to you. <laughs> <laughs> you had a friend of mine uh, back in the day. Yeah. Oh, here Very we go. Good. Oh, wow. At least see the rotor there. Inch yeah. and a quarter, intermediate, super speedway top rotor. Inch and five-eighths, short track road course rotor. Yeah, big, big difference. Yeah. There's a little bit of difference there. Yeah, yeah when, we, when we get back from the road course... We'll, we'll take these and throw them away. <laughs> All that's trash. And we'll, like this weekend, we'll, we'll use the ones from Charlotte, the Speedways, over and over again until we start to see them, uh, you know, cracking or something. But we try to use them up pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't, because their stuff, the stuff's expensive. <laughs> How yeah. many cars have you actually got in there, Jeremy? Well, we have eight cars total. But at the moment, uh, we got four we only got five sitting here um and like i said the road course car is gone I, I don't even know where the other two are to be honest at the moment but um yeah five eight eight total cars and they're all they're all good race cars they're not none of them are are junkers you know we got at the moment got eight great race cars oh yeah there's another speedway car getting fixed last year's getting the body on it yeah we got two speedway cars Two road course cars, and then four short track slash intermediate cars. Now, dur during the race this past weekend, did you get a lot of body damage? Uh, not really, actually. The nose, I think we're replacing maybe the bottom half of the nose and the rear bumper, I, I think. But there wasn't much at all, thank goodness. Good. Uh, yeah. That, you know, this stuff, like I said, it's expensive, so you don't want to have to replace you know, body parts every weekend. And I mean, uh, these noses, as you can see, uh, for a nose, you got to buy it from five star bodies and they're roughly 13, 14, $1,500 for a upper and lower. And, you know, all these, all these parts on this car are pieces. Um, it's like a Lego set kind of like, <laughs> you know, you buy the doors, you buy the fender, you know, the, the roof is one part. Yeah. Uh, what, what's it called? What's the, the greenhouse? I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, it's a lot better than it used to be because you don't have to mess with any of this, you know. Yeah, uh, sitting there with an English wheel and trying to make yeah, the curves. Yeah, all, that, all that's gone. You can see they got really patterns on them. Honeycomb, honeycomb yeah. yeah. 
And you're supposed to have those in different areas of the car. That way they, you know, they know that you didn't mess with it. I see. Uh, I don't know, Mariah, if you've seen that or not. That's the new stuff they've come out with. Uh, body parts that have that design on where you can't buff them out. Try to make them shiny and run faster. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not supposed to use any Bondo on these cars at all either. How do you put the bodies together then? What what do you say? How do you put the bodies together if you don't use any bondo? I mean, is there any seams? How do you feel? Is there no seams in it at all? Flange fit. Huh. They're fl they're flange fit. Uh, they've got uh, they've got a male and a female connector inside the flange to where it pulls them together, and then they're wow. just folded with uh, quarter inch bolts together down the the seams wow. of the nose, fender to nose. Door to fender, fender, or door to quarter panel. Everything is just flange fit. Wow. Cool. That's pretty cool. Well, we're really giving you guys a good interview tonight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Get a private tour to the shop and everything. Well, hang on. I'll something yeah, is. Uh, We don't run good, then I don't get the invite the next week. I'm <laughs> 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 yeah, I distracted the crew chief working on the car. That right right. Right. I'm, glad, I'm glad you didn't invite him because I needed him to work on the same car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that right front suspension better be right tomorrow. <laughs> I know. So what? Distracting him on there. He put that thing together. It's the driver's going, wait a minute now. I know. That's why we got, luckily we got a checklist. So everything on this car get touched before it's um, oh, yeah. looked up. But Mark's. Uh, you tell them what you're doing a little bit, and then, it, then tell them it goes on the pull down, or tell them you know a little bit about that if you don't mind. Well, right now we're just trying to do the uh, the initial alignment. We've got the string bars in, installed, so I'm trying to get uh, the pivot set on the front suspension where we want those heights. We'll get the uh, the frame height set, then we're going to go up on 10 inch aluminum boxes. Then that way I can slide under it. I can move truck arm slugs, set the rear toe. Um, Get all the uh, measurements with the uh, tread width, the wheelbase, the uh, front end, the offset left to right. And once all that's done, we'll come back down to the surface plate and we'll go on scales. We'll set our nose weight, cross with the bar, hooked and unhooked. And then after that, we'll go over to our Mettler Brother pour down machine. It's way, way back, back in there. You can see it. I don't know how good you can see it. But... And on there, we hook, the, we hook the car up with the rims. And we can simulate the travels of the front end and the rear springs and at travel. That way it gives us a better idea without practice how close the splitter is going to be to the racetrack, the height of the splitter left and right. It lets us get a, a measurement for side skirts so we know our clearances so we don't go out there and Jeremy hit the racetrack too hard with the splitter, with the side skirts, anything that would upset the car and, make, and possibly cause him to have an accident. So wow. the mid machine is really top of the line if you get every option by that machine new is probably over a hundred thousand dollars so we're very uh, fortunate to have one here and it really makes my life easier and makes the uh, whole setup process at this level uh, the best it can be obviously the big teams they use sim computer simulation and that kind of thing well we're doing it the old-fashioned way and we're getting hands dirty and doing the work hands-on well, hey, guys, I'm going to let uh, Mariah told me she's got to get going, so I'm going to let her say goodbye to you guys. Thank you guys for having me. It was a, definitely a great show tonight, and I learned a lot. Good. Let us know how you're doing your race, okay? I will for sure. Thank you. I definitely keep you guys updated. All right, Mariah. Uh, yeah, good luck, good luck, Mariah. It's good meeting you. Thank you. It's great meeting you, too. Thank you so much. Tell mom we said hi and have her keep your social media going for you. <laughs> Will do. I'll tell Mommy I'll say hi. Good night, Mr. Talk to you later, Mariah. Good night. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, let you get back to running on this. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this this little shop tour, kind of. Uh, I'll tell you. I, I actually looked it up on the map to see how far away it was. You're about a six and a half hour drive from us, so we'd have to find a a weekend you're down there to be able to come down and visit. Yeah, there you go. Come, we're, we're here often, obviously. We're still here right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you won't let me go home. Yeah, I'm, we keep, we, 
tell Mark you can't leave until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a cot out back or a hammock? <laughs> well, we got a toter home, and uh, but he won't stay in there. He'll drive his butt back to Hickory and sleep a few hours and come on home. Come on back. <laughs> yeah. So how far is Hickory from there? Hour and twenty minutes. Well, hour and twenty minutes. So I'm actually leaving Newton. So okay. Up eighty five and then north on three twenty one. So. Got that wife and girls at home, so I like to at least see them a little bit. Every once in a while, here. you do. I, 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 I feel. <laughs> well, he he wasn't here Monday and Tuesday, so he's having to work a little harder uh -oh. today. And uh, he had, he had some appointments he had to go to, but um, yeah, unfortunately, like you said earlier, we've never set this car up, so it just takes definitely it takes a lot longer. And then tomorrow, you know, we'll have to once he's done on the pull down. We're we'll going to put it on our chassis dyno, which is in another shop, and run it on there. And then we'll bring it back in here, and we'll uh, nut and bolt it and make sure everything's right in the checklist. And hopefully our – we I, I call them our uh, – our, the, the sticker fairy comes and puts some decals <laughs> on the <this> car. <laughs> you got to wrap your car uh, or you just stick them? What's that? Do you all wrap your cars or just stick them? Yeah, they're – like for instance, this one, it's kind of wrapped on the side. Uh, this this is all wrapped yeah. right here. This whole thing, then the you know it's painted gray. That was the uh, throwback car. Literally, just took the decals off of it yesterday. Um, it's still got the roof on it, but it was a whole wrap. So, um, but yeah, most of them we try to keep the. The cost down, you know, to wrap a car, it's a couple thousand dollars, yeah. you know. So to do a, you know, this this is a first Pacific funding car. Uh, this is a lot simpler. You know, it's not a whole wrap. So the car's just painted black, and really just the side of it's got all this on it. And the rest just got the first Pacific funding decal. So it's a lot. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, cars. this is a lot cheaper. Cheaper uh, deal for us to do, so uh, that's half the price or less of, of a full wrap. Yeah, Sammy's <laughs> son uh, does that for a living. He wraps cars. Oh yeah, who 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 is that? Sammy's son, Sammy oh, okay. Jr. <laughs> yeah, he, does, he does a lot of that vinyl stuff. He's on, he's on a lot of it. He, he does a lot of those half wraps, like on yours, which just the sides. He does a lot of them. Oh, okay. I liked your shirt, by the way. I think that was your shirt. You what did it say? Got wedge or something? That's that's Dwayne. That's Dwayne. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I get wedge more than I had wedge this past week more than I wanted to. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, have y'all ever got a shot for? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, that's kind of different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And they are hot rod here. She's. She's hopefully ready. Be ready. I like hopefully the. She's good. What's the JCR on? Is that? Well, that's your. Uh, looks like brakes. Yeah. Brake bias stuff and everything. Yeah, they just they just put that decal on it. Is this gonna be the first time you've run that car? Yes, sir. First time for this car. It's a, it's a sister car to, uh, to our other cars. So you see that number. 1604 and then like the the car we just raced at darlington we finished six with that was 1604 and this one is uh 1614 okay oh uh, so yeah they're just they're just sister cars they're all the same you mind, jeremy if you mind my ask you don't have to say where did you where'd you source those vehicles from but you, you i don't uh they're they're from ganassi okay they the 2019, when they were going to run a full uh, uh, deal, they, they, their, their sponsor, you guys probably remember that he uh, he got put in jail. So that that all went the that all went down south, and wow, uh, we ended up getting a few of these cars and uh, turn. These have been the best cars I've ever had, you know, because a lot of those cars you get from the teams, they don't sell you everything with them, and you're it's kind of like you got a puzzle and you're missing half the pieces for it. Wow. So these cars came pretty complete, and they, they've been the best ones I've ever gotten to own so far. 
So yeah, yeah. I think it's the crew chief that's made the difference, but he says it's the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, we, we get we'll, Harry, we we the crew chief made a difference earlier yeah. this year. Yeah, we did. That, we established that. It definitely has. And look, you get to see him work. Isn't that good? He actually does work. <laughs> work, wow. work at Jack pretty good. Wow. <laughs> I'd like to have a dollar every time he's pumped the jack. <laughs> I think we're good, buddy. Yeah, he can work that jack. So, that's yeah. The, that's, that's, is, that, is that the tennis <laughs> plate you're putting on so you can go under it? Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, now he can <clears throat> he can get under here and do what he needs to do. Do all the adjustments. And I can actually get under it. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is. <laughs> you know what's funny is people think that you know, I mean, there, there are fancy alignment shops and, and all this and all that. For It's just for street cars, not to mention race cars. But, you know, people get out a, a two soup cans and some string and a couple of rulers and can get their front alignment or their, their whole chassis alignment with something that's simple. And you've got string on the other side going on there, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. String on both sides. Sure, the whole stuff's yeah, still both sides yep. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's he does that every week actually. Yeah, people say string my car. What do you mean you string your car? <laughs> now <laughs> old, old school, old school still works. Hey Jeremy, now when y'all go to Richmond and uh race this year. Now I don't know if you remembered some of the really bad downpours they had out there at that track. But I remember one oh, of the yeah. I remember one of the guys on the Xfinity team over near where uh Eric McClure usually parked that the water got so deep they jacked the car up and put it up on on the stilts on the stands and everything and one of the guys grabbed some uh, gas tubing and one of the guys held it up out of the out above all the stuff so he could go and breathe underneath the car while he worked on it oh my gosh oh, yeah crap. Mark tires Mark just said he's got pictures of it and I do remember that I was I was there too and we were was uh, floating down the pit, sitting on a tire, <laughs> fifty-five gallons <laughs> floating away. Yeah, yeah, we were parked on the opposite side, so we were good. Thank God, we were high enough in points to park on the good side. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he. Uh, there was there were some people out there. That if you had one tire, it would float. If you had two, it might float. But I see people starting to stack four and five high, so they'd have enough weight so they wouldn't move. But yeah. I, I, it just blew my mind to see the guy grab the air hose, go up underneath like he's a scuba diver, and go working underneath that sucker. <laughs> that is crazy. I know. I'm telling you what, if you want it to rain, bring NASCAR to town. It'll rain. <laughs> oh. That's for sure. Now, y'all were goodness. racing at Richmond in what, September? I think so, yes. That yeah. sounds pretty close. Well, we're gonna. I'm going to see if we can snag everybody and bring them down and give you a, have a bunch of fun down there with you. Yeah, we'll get you some pit passes, whatever you need. Sure. Or else yeah. we'll drag you out here and let you have some fun out here away from the track for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> With yeah some, well, right. Fix up some good ribeyes. <clears throat> hey, there you go. You, you got me in if you got ribeyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like some ribeyes, i tell you Roger, that. Roger, give me a ride one of those, uh, those uh, carts they have around Langley. Take them out Langley, which those boys draft each other. <laughs> oh, the champ carts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you're talking about the drifting cars they've been having out there, too. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I was watching the, uh, <clears throat> I got on my, um, Roger was fussing me about doing a track pass, you know, goal, and I got that, got on that, and I, I saw him sitting in your truck, Mr. Mr. Terrell, uh, <laughs> carrying your air conditioning. Yeah. And I called him when I texted him, well, you remember that. But, uh. It was those carts drafting each other, and that was some wild stuff, man. People would say, they don't draft with that track. I say, mm. Yes, they do. Watch the carts, <laughs> buddy. Okay, and down, I guess that line is like Caladega. He's in the back. You know? it, doesn't <laughs> it's matter. All it doesn't take long at all. Uh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Uh, no, I that's the that. unfortunate thing about you racing in Richmond. When Richmond is racing, we don't race, so we don't have something we can bring you over and show you. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I we saw that compete. picture. With Roger in there in the truck with you. Yeah, he got in uh, when races started, and he got out when it was over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I showed you that. I sent you the pictures of the race car that I was supposed to be spotting for that night. Uh, yeah. 
So I didn't have nothing to yeah, do. That's... So he I'm out with Dave. Wall. Vinnie Paul wanted the crap out of that that's, car. Uh, yeah. he, yeah, he, he wanted that up. Man, yeah. that's a that sucks. I know that feeling. It's never a good one. I tell you that. Yeah. What did you say? The throttle stuck open on it. Yeah, he, he said the throttle stuck wide open when he went into that turn, and uh, it it was already carrying a lot of speed. Him. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, no, there. I have had one time that happened to me, and I did manage to make it stop, but it cost the other guy his car. Oh man! I happened to be passing him underneath, and went to lift, and all of a sudden that sucker was still wide open and carried me right up into his car, flat side to side, and we slid up. He hit the wall, and I sort of ricocheted off him. But by then I'd already lifted the uh, pedal and was able to go normal. And, uh, oh my goodness! There was there was a rather yeah. large fight that night <coughs> down in my pits. <laughs> I bet so. He was mad at you that that happened. Well, I told the guys on the radio. I said somebody needs to go down there and tell this guy, you know, what happened because he's going to think I just did it to him on purpose and that it wasn't a broken yeah. spring or something in the carburetor. And nobody yeah. did. And so at the end of the race, hundred laps later, here we go. I dropped down the net. And all of a sudden, somebody's trying to punch me out. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, wow! It, it was I. I hate to make light of it, but it was really hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the driver was the first one. I grabbed his arm, shoved it to the roof because all he was doing is punching my helmet. The official Dang. pulled him off. Then yeah. somebody else tried it. It turned out it was his dad. They took hauled him yeah. off. Well, two of my friends sat one in each window of the car, and I'm sitting here looking out. You remember the old western movies in the bar rooms when they have the big old brawls, and all of a sudden everybody's hitting on everybody. I have three crew members, okay? There were 20 <laughs> people fighting. People were getting thrown across the roof of the, or the hood of the car. And I was sitting oh there, it was just like an explosion. Everybody was pissed about something. But I'm just sitting wow. there, just, I was just laughing my ass off watching everybody do all that stuff. <laughs> but it, it was I a mean, trip. yeah. You didn't have video capability back then. They could run out of the lab track or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Nobody gets hurt. at that one back a few weeks ago. People were swinging uh, torque wrenches. Or oh, something. got it. Tri City or Tri yeah. Tri City Raceway or something. Uh, Tri Motor Tri City. Yeah, Tri Co. I think it was. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, one yeah. of our local drivers. Two of our local drivers were over there in a race, and uh, somebody got pissed off about what happened. And the two drivers were down together discussing it as drivers normally do. And it was family members or fans down yeah. inside of the pit area. They got ganged up on one girl. You have to see her on the video. She goes over by a car, and there's a torque wrench in the car. She picks the torque wrench up, comes over, and starts beating this guy on top of the head with it. Put stitches in his head. My she was wailing the heck out of that, man. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> that's that's terrible. Uh, and, I, and, she, and she had nothing to do with it. You know, it's not like the two drivers. But that's usually your biggest problem. It's not the drivers. It's the damn family that come along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like his his 25 crewmen he had that night. (laughs) When a girl gets involved in a fight, it never turns out good. (laughs) Somehow, when women get involved, it it never turns out good. I say put a wrestling ring up after after the races, and if you want to go in there, let them go in there together. I I used to tell them (laughs) they can get the uh, those big old sumo suits that you can blow up and just. Wail on each other with those suckers until you get too damn tired to care about it anymore. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't screw the- <laughs> doesn't hurt, but wears your ass out. <laughs> That's a good idea, right? Huh? Have you ever been in one of them? I've never been in one. We were in Wildwood, New Jersey, at the beach over there, and they had they had them at the boardwalk, and went and got one of them, man. Yeah. That thing will wear you out. You are slam tired when you come out of them, man. <laughs> they don't let you go for about five or ten minutes. They, you ain't in it long. But, man, when you come out of there, you are so tired. Because you got about like eight people together and all bouncing off each other. It's a lot of fun. But, man, you're tired when you get out of that. <sighs> That's something for your bucket list, right, Jeremy? Yeah. I, 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 try, I like try anything once, you know. Well, you survive, yeah, right? Okay. I'll get Mark in there and we'll beat each other up. <laughs> oh, yeah, now. You want to keep him around now. You don't want to lose him. That's a good point. I better not. And I, I know I've whooped him, so I better, I, we better not. <laughs> get Courtney I'm, to take care of him. <laughs> but, hey, there you go. 
Now, does Courtney get to go most of the races with you, or does she just go to a couple of them? With all no, the she, she just goes to a few here and there. Uh, uh, she's going to Charlotte this weekend. Uh, she usually likes to go to the Vegas one, of course. Uh, she wants don't to go know there. why. It just really going to be location. It doesn't. She don't really care about. I mean, she cares about the race, but she just uh, she likes to go where there's fun. So, <laughs> yeah. She don't go to all of them, but she goes to roughly 10 a year, maybe. 8 to 10, maybe. So she probably went to the Dover one since they got the casino right there. Actually, no. She didn't go to that one either. Yeah. She's been there, and she didn't uh, She didn't really care for it. So uh, I'm glad she didn't go. That's less money that I got to spend. <laughs> yes. I've, I've been oh, to Dover oh. many times, but I've never gone to the casino right there by the track. I'm more interested in the racing. Yeah, um, a good bar, good bar, and good food. That's right. They do got good food, yeah. And yeah, they do. Mark, Mark walked up and scared me, but he said uh, his wife this year in Vegas, she won over twelve to fourteen thousand dollars on the slot machines, Ooh. and like that's how much <laughs> she you uh, won and, and left there with, you know. So they they did dang good, and uh, <laughs> and I saw it South Point Casino where. Uh, Brendan Gaughan's casino is so. Oh, okay. uh, that was uh, that was a hell of a weekend for them. They made a lot of money. That, that, that's good, man. You barely do you leave a casino with ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. I know. I said, "Oh, Mark, I guess we ain't got to pay you this week." I mean, yeah, you made plenty of money. <laughs> <laughs> we got you here. Made sure you won money. Hey, yeah, you got a bonus you know, on Mark that. Probably said, "No, my wife won that money. I didn't win it." <laughs> that, that, <laughs> That's her money. <laughs> now, just say, just remember, dear, half. Yeah, that's her money. Yeah, that, that ain't that's hers. <laughs> if Mark would have won it, it had been there. Like, it's our money. Yeah. And if, if he wins it, it's her money. Like that's exactly how that works. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been married almost 46 years. Believe me, I know that's how it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm 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 definitely learned, for sure. <laughs> yeah, when, when we used to go looking for houses and stuff, she was always looking for her closet and her closet. I said, what about mine? Y'all don't worry about you. That's just hers and hers. And mine, has, <laughs> mine has three. Yeah. We, have, we have four bedrooms and she's got clothes in three of the closets. That's two of them. Two dude. of the bedrooms are massive with walk-ins. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's, yeah I know. That surprised me right there at all. <laughs> I, I, I myself know I have way too many and clothes. You know, those closets yep. are full of stuff she's never going to wear. <laughs> oh, believe me, I know that. But then I do too. I like what I just I got clothes I need to get out of too. So, you know, those, those, I, I'm going to fit in those one day, and it ain't going to happen. I, <laughs> I think I'm the, I've come to that reality. Hey, Dave, you know, say if you hadn't worn it in two years, you need to, you know, send it down the road. You know? and hell, without I got clothes, I'm still wearing it older than that. Yeah, I <laughs> Okay, well, David. I got, I got a always... suit called my wedding suit. Now, both my girls are married now, so but I might need to get dressed up one day for go to somebody else's wedding, which I use it for for another wedding. Roger, what are you doing? Now, you've always seen me in black shorts. Yep. Guess what? Yep. I've got new colors. Well, uh, just got them in. Got them in yesterday. I got hey, I like Good. I got a freaking rainbow. I, I have a certain type of shorts that I use that they're very, very comfortable, antimicrobiotic and all this other stuff. Okay. And they, they're super dry. You off your knee scars. I can do that. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that really sucks. But uh, I usually wear a very colorful shirt when I'm at the track. And I tell everybody it's because the drivers can't see where it's yet. <laughs> I'm going to make sure they can see a bright color. Yeah, that's I always right. wore my I I won a Reese's Cup shirt and I wore it to work because I got another oh. shirt on and I got a white coat over that. But I said, don't worry, I got well, so it's a it's a side colored Reese's package, so it's orange and it's got a silhouette on it like a Reese's Cup with a bite out of it and a Reese's little on the back. But <laughs> yeah, I almost wore that in my I said, but you see me just fine with a white shirt on, so. Mike yeah. was laughing about that. I said, "No, wear it." I said, "Absolutely, I wore more than a thing on an internet contest. I'm gonna wear it. You better believe it." <laughs> so, David, now I will have matching pants to go with all the bright colored shirts. Well, that one, that's good. This and is they, one of his bright. This is one of his bright I, colors. Yeah, fluorescent green, 
neon green or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also have right. a ton of shirts, too. Uh, and what's that, I have Jeremy? a couple of uh, bright polos when we went on cruises, a bright yellow and a bright red. And, and uh, it shipped. They had a common, a big common area, like a mall, and it's a couple of stories high. And, um, and I'm walking around, and I, you know, we're separated because I went one place and they went something else. That you're not going to find all these thousands of people, even though it's like being in the middle of a, of a street. Small city. Now, the ships laid out in like the middle sections, like being in downtown somewhere. And uh, then my the folks, you know, my wife and the friends come up and said, "How'd you find me?" I said, "You had a bright yellow shirt on." I said, "Okay." <laughs> one of the reasons I had it on, and I'm, you That's know, right. find the lost child, you know. Yeah, I like hey, I like those cruises. I used to go on them all the time before COVID, but uh, but yeah, I miss those. Hopefully, they get to come back. Yeah, yeah, I got to get my exercise going here. I told my wife, I said, you know, you don't realize how much walking you do just on the boat. Forget wherever you get off and do whatever you're going to do as you're hiking around that thing, and everybody wants to get on the elevator, and so you know, I always try to do that because my knees were starting to go then, so I'm trudging up and down those steps, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. Street, out of walking. Get your steps in. I wish I'd yeah. known you liked those. Like what? The orange uh, Zero Gatorade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, we keep Zero here at the shop. I just, yeah, I, love. I just had a whole bunch of it that went out of date, and I just tossed them. Oh, oh man. I, love, I love the zeros, no sugar. So, yeah, yeah, a friend of mine has a trophy shop, and he calls me up all the time. And I always go down there working on stuff, and he say, "Here, I got some of this extra. You want this? All right, sure. Why? Why not? Bring it here and oh, drink it." Yeah, exactly. Especially, you know, drinking it when it's hot uh, keeps you hydrated. So, um, I drink a lot of Pity Light during the race weekend. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I used to joke with uh, Justin Allgaier. Um, about he likes the uh, grape Gatorade, the uh, the one that was the low calorie version. I forget what they used to have because I was sitting there walking around drinking one, and he was walking around drinking. <laughs> looked at each other, and started laughing and having a good old time about it and everything. So, but he's, well, I, got, I said, Frick, helping my friend in a race in July Fourth weekend here many many years ago at drag strip. Well, I used to run drag strip stuff. So. And I was out at Suffolk, which was a concrete drag strip. And the and they had guys had to check in the water temp the water grains, they call it, you know, from the drag race with the dust and the carburetors and the air temperature and the in the shade it was a hundred degrees low okay. concrete, you know, and that was about five foot off the concrete. And uh, so I had good experience with you know, I got Gatorade the second day and I wasn't so wiped out. So I said, This stuff works. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely believe in that stuff. I start I start drinking about an hour before I go out to the racetrack to work. So by the time I get there and eat, I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Probably what you do too. I tell I tell you doing? what that uh, when I when I'm out at the track, um, I find from the years I raced, Jeremy, I got used to the heat in the car. In fact, I used to go to saunas at the at the. Uh, health place I used to belong to and would sit in there for 30 or 45 minutes getting used to the heat. So when I was in the race car, it wasn't as bad. Yeah, that's a very good idea for sure. Just uh, build up some tolerance. Yeah, go out in the truck and just turn the dang heat on and then ride around. <laughs> that's what we were talking about before you come on the air. Yeah, yeah or just don't turn that on in these summer days. Like, yeah. that's basically what it feels like in the race car. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know, David, he's not going to... I've got a steering wheel, so I'll burn my hands when I get in my car after I get off of work. And then I've got claws i got to put on the armrests on both sides of me to keep burning my elbows because all that, you know, that vinyl upholstery is like, you know, flaming. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, look, when they sit those cars out on the on pit lane and they don't oh. put a cover on the windshield, and, you know, if I didn't put my stuff in or they had to move it, and they put my gloves and my Hans Weiss and... The helmet all in there, and my earplugs on the dash, and there's oh, no crap. crap. I'm like, uh, and you get in the car, and you got to put that stuff in, and it literally, it uh, it uh, it zap you is so hot. So uh, I'm like, put the stuff like down in the seat, like where the sun's just beaming on it. So yeah. uh, you know exactly what you mean. That that just 
that just starts you off right there, and you're already <laughs> a little pissed off that that happens. You're like, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. That's so hot. Uh, you just need a glove compartment. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, wasn't Jim, Jimmy Johnson used to carry a bunch of his stuff out in a suitcase to the car before he got in? Wasn't it? Uh, uh, not Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, I mean. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think so. And, and he was also, uh, he would also wet his whole suit down before and he and we put it on and the suit would be soaking wet. He, they, he started doing that a year or two ago. I, I don't know if that actually helps, but um, that's what he was doing. <laughs> it helps till you get too hot. He, but he was like you, though. He was a real fit. He, he was a real fitness fanatic. Jimmy's Jimmy. Well, and Jeff Gordon a lot of them were too. But if you're not in good shape, you're not going to last in the car. No, definitely not. It'll 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 wear you out quick. I promise you. You know, uh, I worked on that uh, Sports Illustrated magazine several years ago, and it did a body thing showing the people and showing off their muscle development and everybody's going holy cow you know and i said yeah and this is one of our top guys and you just think you know you're just driving around town and driving interstate 64 out here they got some people think they're on the racetrack driving on 64 by the way doing stupid stuff but uh you don't know what it is at all you know uh one guy years ago they developed this thing that took a steering wheel and welded up some stuff and he'd sit in the seat and put two shock absorbers on the steering wheel and would do this to exercise their muscles, but you can't really <laughs> exercise them any other way, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's a good idea for you, sure. You need that yeah. for your next road race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I'll get a, a, a weight like a twenty pounder at home in my little room. I work out in the office room. I call it office, but uh, you know, you put you sit down with it, you put your legs up, and then you just you know you just go back and forth with it. Right. You know, with a 20, 25 pound piece of weight and do that as much as you can. So that that's kind of similar in a way, but uh, try to do stuff like that, you know, to, to prepare to. Now, you know, Natalie Decker, right? Yeah. Okay. She was running uh, out at Langley a couple of years ago and running a late model race. And they had twin fifties and it was a hot night. Okay. She finished up and got out of the car and I walked over to go talk to her because I, I knew her and been talking with her before. I couldn't find her. I was, finally, I went around the back side of the toolbox. There she was sitting down there like, uh, you know. She was <laughs> definitely dehydrated. And, oh, yeah. And uh, she was at, at the, on the verge of a heat stroke. And I actually walked her over to the little <laughs> emergency section where the all the uh, tech guys are and got her rehydrated and She's sitting here saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to go run the next race. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> and finally, I got her phone number. The, the uh, EMT guys came in and were talking with her. And they had to get her phone numbers for contact, emergency, stuff like that. I immediately took that phone number, called up her mother. I said, you need to get down here into the pits if you can. Your daughter is almost on the verge of heat stroke, and she wants to go race the second race. Yeah. <laughs> That's what drivers do, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, hold hey. it. nothing against Jeremy. We never said drivers are the smartest. <laughs> no, definitely. No, that's like the big race we have coming up in July called the Hampton Heat. Uh, I know a couple of years ago, I was in Korea and I was watching it on the internet. And I mean, it got so hot during the race, they actually stopped at one point for a cool off time. There were several guys that got sent to the hospital because they had overheated so bad. Wow. It was about yeah, 100, 100, 100 degrees and about 90% humidity. It was a terrible yep. night for them guys, man. Oof. Yeah, that's, that's, you can't, I mean, I don't know, you can prepare for it, but there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Yep. That's that, that point. Yeah, it ain't so much the heat, it's the humidity. The humidity kills you. Yeah, that's our problem here, the humidity goes with it. Yeah, being right here on the water. At Le least Jeremy's got a good AC back there. He ain't sweated anything, and you can see the ducks behind him. They're massive. <laughs> Yeah, we that that's actually a brand new system we got over the off season, and it used to be a sweatshop in here. So uh, we're very very fortunate. Uh, the engine shop is oh, next, year, and they they traded out a couple. I think they traded out a couple engines for the whole shop to get redone. So uh, man, it's been it's been great. Thank God, this thing is uh, <laughs> is is wonderful. That's good. Man, looks like a real nice shop over there, though, man. It's impressive. Very nice job. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, that. Well, well, maybe we'll do another interview, and the, the next one I can show you the engine shop. Sounds good. 
Well, yeah, I'm going to bail out of here. Yeah, I'm right? I just heard yeah. the thunder and lightning. Thunder, thunder at least over the house and rain's coming in. But I got some prep I need to go do downstairs. Uh -oh. Dang, I didn't, yeah, even, I got, didn't I, even know I that was happening. I had sprinklers that are scheduled to turn on in the morning. I got a feeling I'm not going to need them to work. Hey, that's good, 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 good to see you again. We'll be watching this weekend, okay? Thank you guys so much, David. I appreciate it. And, right, and good care, Hope y'all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it this time. It was fun. Yeah, always do. Oh, yeah, that means fun. he didn't enjoy the other times. I don't know about that. Tell <laughs> <laughs> Mark, tell Mark we said tonight. Yes, sir. I will. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna uh, go help him and see if I can, uh, if we can get him some dinner. If he's gonna be here a lot longer, and uh, hopefully finish this car up. But thank you guys for everything, and appreciate your support. And always good chat with you. Not just this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck this weekend, man. <laughs> All right, man. We'll be watching. Thanks, success, man. I'd like to see the little team do well. So you're doing a good job, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you much. That means a lot. All right. Go ahead and have yourself a good night, Jeremy. Get that boy working hard. <laughs> yep. Good night. See you later. Good luck. All right, guys. I'm going to bail out with you, too. Yeah, All right. Well, David, I hope you're wrong about that rain. I don't know where you're at compared to me, but we both had some by outside painting done. Today and they didn't come in because they thought it was going to rain. And you know, hopefully it's not. Well, going to rain. I, I think it's just going to be maybe may just be tonight. But that was thunder I heard in the background just a few minutes ago. So oh, well. I'm going to go look and see what we got going on. Well, you know, I'm getting tired of watering my grass. Yeah, uh, I just started. Out, now it's so dry. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm losing it already. Well, hey, Jim, have a good night here. It says right, no rain for later. the next sixty minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. What's radar? I don't see anything on radar. So, there's just something down south, but I don't know. But, anywho, you guys yeah. have, have a good weekend, and we'll catch everybody next week on Let's Talk Racing. See ya. Good night, night guys. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Damn. Harder and harder to get up. Oh, let me go pee. That was a long.